when Bob Johnson aboard Kansas City Chief Mascot Warpaint charged onto the field, he couldn't have helped feeling that the day brought the Chiefs another little bighorn, as their opponent was to be Colonel George Armstrong Kayat, better known as Ed, head coach of the Philadelphia Eagles. Kayat led the 0-5 Eagles into Arrowhead Stadium, and most expected the Eagles to leave with their spotless record intact. For today's game, Kayat chose to go with veteran Pete Lisk at quarterback and not risk rookie John Reeves' psych on the slings and arrows of the chief defense. Including the exhibition season, the Eagles had lost nine straight games. But while the Eagles have been remarkably consistent, poor every week, Hank Stram's Chiefs have been in and out. And the little general thinks it's time his team played up to their preseason press. Picked as one of the favorites to go to the Super Bowl, the Chiefs are currently mired in a 3-2 and two record and trail the Raiders in the AFC West Division. The game marks the first meeting ever between the Eagles and Chiefs, and it's a critical one for both teams. The Eagles need a win to gain respectability, and the Chiefs need the win to keep abreast of the Raiders. This is the NFL Game of the Week. The Philadelphia Eagles versus the Kansas City Chiefs. At the start of the game, the Arrowhead ground crew inadvertently hung the United States flag upside down, the international symbol of distress, and it was perhaps a harbinger of things to come. Surely, the Eagles were distressed, for with the league's lowest scoring offense, they had to go against one of pro football's premier defenses, and on Philadelphia's first two plays, both runs, most people saw what they expected. The Eagles could not get outside and had even less success in the middle as Poe James was forced to recover his own fumble. Faced with third and 13, Lisk rolled away from the chief pressure and threw a prayer to double-covered James. The play had absolutely no way of succeeding, yet it did. Ben Hawkins grabbed a rebound off Mike Sensabaugh's toe and completed a 67-yard play. A team in desperate need of a break had gotten one. And they would be a different team for the remainder of the first half. The Eagles' game plan was a conservative one, designed to eliminate mistakes, and though early they were not getting much by running, they stuck to their plan. By their third possession, Philadelphia had established that they would run at any cost, and it kept the Chiefs honest. On the next play, watch center Mike Evans snap the ball before the snap count to catch the Chiefs off sides. Lisk went ahead with the heads-up play and hit Hawkins for 20. In Hawkins and Harold Jackson, the Eagles have two great wide receivers, and Jackson was at his greatest, cleanly beating Jim Marsalis for a second Eagle touchdown from 36 yards out. Jackson, a 9-3, 100-man, currently is the league's leading receiver, but it was not stats that had the Eagles flying. They were simply pumping the adrenaline and led 14-0. On the kickoff following their score, the Eagles nearly got burned as number 22 Larry Marshall followed Ed Podolak's block and nearly broke it all the way. Tom Dempsey, number 19, the Eagles kicker, made the tackle with only Al Nelson backing him up. Dempsey, despite a birth defect that affected part of his right foot and arm, is one of the game's best kickers. He is in the record book for a 63-yard field goal, but inside Dempsey nurtures a true athlete's desire to play. He has often said that he wants a shot at playing defense and relishes the licks he can get on the kickoff team. Dempsey's tackle perhaps inspired the Eagles' defense, or in the second quarter, they swiped one of Lenny Dawson's passes. Ron Porter snatched a deflection, and the Eagles had a turnover, although they nearly gave it right back. Bill Bradley saved the Eagles with the recovery, but the Eagles could not move this time and were forced to punt. On the play, the Eagles got yet another turnover. Larry Marshall received the punt with enough room to get to the wall, but when hit by Tom Bailey, number 31, he lost the ball.
the ball squirted out of the bottom of the pile, and after some more digging, the Eagles were set up on the Kansas City 43. Just two plays later, Lisk heaved one for Jackson, who this time beat Marsalis by even more. Incredibly, the Eagles led the Chiefs 21-0. To this point, Lisk was six for six for 185 yards and three touchdowns. Perhaps that groundskeeper had known something. The Chiefs were indeed distressed and behind by a lot too. On the kickoff, following the Eagles' third score, they were nearly caught again. This time, Marshall chose the sideline and raced 48 yards. Again, it was Dempsey helping on the tackle, but from good field position, the Chiefs were able to assert their game plan. The Chiefs' offensive line of tackle Dave Hill, number 73, guard Mo Mormon, number 76, center Jack Rudney, number 58, guard Ed Buddy, 71, and tackle Jim Tyrer, 77, is one of the finest blocking units in the game. They average eight years pro experience and were expected to dominate the Philadelphia defensive line. But the Eagles were charging hard, and Dawson had to go to screens to neutralize the hard rush. Green was the Chiefs' best weapon, and for a time, their only weapon, as the Eagles held the Chiefs to 44 rushing yards in the first half. When Dawson tried to pass, he rarely had time to even set and look before he had to hightail it. In the second period, the Chiefs drove twice deep into Eagle territory, but could not score a touchdown, as Dawson was held to 74 yards passing. Repeating the last play reveals that the Eagles actually should have sacked Dawson, but the good pressure by Houston Antoine, number 75, and Gary Pettigrew, number 88, gave him little time to look downfield, and he gained a scant yard. Though the Chiefs had a first down on the Eagle 29, they had to settle for a field goal and trailed 21-3. After the field goal, the Eagles began another drive. Bombed into pass consciousness, the Chiefs missed Larry Watkins, number 34, who slipped through for 28 yards. But now, when they had a beautiful balance going, Lisk made his first mistake, underthrowing Kent Kramer. Willie Lanier intercepted with two minutes left in the first half. The Chiefs began a drive that would reach the Philadelphia 25. But again, the Eagles made the big defensive plays. A hard rush by Don Hultz, number 83, nailed Podolak in the backfield. And somewhere between Hultz and the ground, Podolak lost the ball. A repeat reveals that Hultz was the first man off the ball and simply blew by the pulling Kansas City lineman. He also punched the ball loose but the Chiefs maintained possession and got another field goal to trail 21-6. The Chiefs had scored six straight points and were perhaps beginning to assert themselves as Billy Wallach would find out 35 yards into his return.
After popping up Wallach, the Chiefs put good pressure on Lisk, but he escaped and found James. But James fumbled when hit hard by Bobby Bell and Willie Lanier. Jim Kearney, number 46, recovered and might have gone all the way had he not forgotten the ball. It was another break for the opportunistic Eagles who were not playing like 0-5. Instead, it was the Chiefs who were on the ropes, trailing at the half, 21-6. With the Chiefs down 21-6 at the half, having given one of their worst performances in a long time, everyone was waiting for them to explode. On the opening series of the second half, they did just that. The Eagles' defense held Otis Taylor to one catch in the first half, but he caught one to start the drive. They had bottled up the Chiefs' blocking and held their runners to meager yardage in the first half, but on this opening drive, the Chiefs moved at will. With Wendell Hayes and Ed Podolak running nine of the ten plays, the Chiefs ended in the Eagles' end zone, with Podolak following right guard Mo Moorman on an 11-yard touchdown. The Chiefs' blocking, Podolak and Hayes had looked devastating on this opening series, and it now seemed like only a matter of time before everything would again be up to date in Kansas City, as the Chiefs now trailed 21-13. As war paint did his victory trot, Coach Kayat and the Eagles plotted their second half strategy, which was plain and simple. The offense had to keep the ball on the ground, make no mistakes, and hold on for dear life. The Eagles offense, which has never been accused of having the killer instinct, did in fact keep the ball on the ground for all but one play in the third quarter. But the Chiefs' defense, which had been so porous in the first half, stopped the Eagles running. They knew this would be the Eagles' strategy and were keying on the run. Bill Bradley kept the Chiefs from returning his punts as we follow bomb squatter Tom Bailey, number 31, on his journey to down Bradley's punt. Bradley is the spark of the Eagles' defense, an all-pro last year at free safety. His punting, punt returning, and play at free safety have made number 28 the outstanding member of the team again this year. He continued to play well in the third quarter, breaking up Dawson passes. The rest of the defense, too, played well after the Chiefs' opening series of the half. In fact, the Chiefs failed to cross midfield the rest of the quarter. If Bradley is the key man in the Eagles' deep defense, Steve Zabel, number 89, is the key man in the middle at middle linebacker. The big man up front is six-year veteran Mel Tom, the Eagles' premier pass rusher. Tom, along with Richard Harris and the rest of the line, pressured Dawson most of the game, and here trapped Dawson on a third down attempt. On a repeat, watch Tom at right end blow by Jim Tyrer and smother Dawson to force a punt. Bill Bradley then set the Eagles up near midfield with this return near the end of the third quarter. Then the Eagles ground game began to roll again as Poe James and Larry Watkins would lead them into the fourth quarter on a drive that looked like it would produce another score. Watch the two Eagle guards pull left. The Chiefs tackles went with them for an instant, letting Watkins quickly shoot through the hole for a big gain influence blocking at its best. Poe James is the first back with outside speed the Eagles have had in a long time, and he had a big day sweeping against the Chiefs, who are usually impossible to run wide on. But James's long run was nullified due to a penalty, and the Eagles' drive was stopped when Pete Lisk was betrayed first by his receiver Kent Kramer, then by his own arm.
Number 20, free safety Mike Sensabaugh's interception and odyssey through the end zone was merely a touchback and gave the Chiefs the ball on the 20. With 11 minutes to play, everyone again awaited Dawson's offense and his big play attack to strike. But the Eagles' defense kept holding on, pursuing well the wide running plays, bottling up the inside, and harassing Lenny the Cool into hurried, inaccurate passes. The Eagles' defense had sparked them to a good finish last year, but had been one of the worst in the league thus far this season. They were redeeming themselves in this game. The Eagles were not without the breaks either. They had one on their first touchdown and got one on this punt that Bradley fumbled out of bounds to keep possession. From here, Curly Culp, Jim Lynch and company again stopped the Eagles cold as Watkins and James moved backwards under the force of the Kansas City Crunch. They gave up the ball and the Chiefs took possession near midfield with six minutes left, trailing by eight. From here, Dawson concentrated on his short game, using his setbacks on runs and outlet passes, disdaining Otis Taylor, who was being double covered. But this is Taylor's worth. He is almost always doubled, and this will leave one of the other chief receivers open. Dawson found tight end Willie Frazier beyond the secondary, and the Chiefs had their desperately needed touchdown. The conversion made it Eagles 21, Chiefs 20, four minutes to play. Could the Eagles hang on? The Chiefs nervously watched Stenerud's kickoff as the Eagles' offense would take over at their own 20 to try and run the clock out. They would not be able to do it, although Liss crossed up the defense with a pass that gave them a first down and some more time. But the defense rallied and pushed the Eagles back on the next three downs. List was disheartened at not being able to control the ball for the remainder of the game, and Philadelphia had to punt with two minutes left. Again, Bradley's punt was deep, yet high enough to make Larry Marshall call for a fair catch. The Chiefs would start what would be their last series from their 33. They needed at least 30 yards in the remaining two minutes to get in range of Jan Stanerud's foot, or Ed Kayat and his Eagles would have their first victory of the season. First down. Dawson, with a play fake to Podolak, goes to his other setback, Jim Otis, who is chased out after 13 yards by linebacker Bob Creech, number 58. Creech, a second-year man from TCU, figured heavily in this last series. On the next play from the Chiefs' 46, Creech almost finished off the Chiefs with an interception. It's now second down from the 46, and the Chiefs are dealt the death blow by their own hand. The fumble is recovered by Lenny Dawson, but the play loses 30 yards back to the Chiefs' 17. Dawson can't go deep now. The Eagles are in a prevent defense. So on third and fourth downs, he goes for the medium range passes, but both fail. The fourth down play broken up by Bob Creech, number 58. You 
would never know it from Ed Kayat, but it's all over. The Eagles take over on downs with seconds left, and Pete List gratefully runs out the final moments himself. Finally, after a dismal preseason and five straight humiliating performances in their regular season, the Eagles had a victory, and coach Ed Kayat couldn't wait to show it off. It had taken what Kayat knew it would take to have to beat any team, let alone the Chiefs, and he had finally gotten it from his team. A running attack that was more than a prayer at setting up the passing. Good blocking, accurate passing, few mistakes, a little bit of luck, and a strong defensive effort. He had gotten all of it in this game, and the team deserved their first victory, which cost them perhaps the first pick in the draft next year. As for the mentor, Hank Stram, he's got trouble right here in Kansas City. This was their third loss, yet they're still in the thick of the conference race with a 3-3 record. They may stay in it till the end, but they're just not the same Chiefs. Or maybe it's the Eagles who are not the same. Or maybe it's just another given Sunday in the NFL.